Hi, my name is David Dyer, and today we're going to take a look at what the true gospel really is. Now, during this message, especially at the beginning, I'm going to make some radical statements, and I'd like to ask you to hold on a little bit after I make these statements and watch some of this video and see what I'm really trying to say. I would like to ask you not to jump to conclusions, but to listen and analyze and pray about this message. What most Christians believe is the gospel is something that I'm going to call the gospel of forgiveness. That means they believe that Jesus' main purpose in dying on the cross and rising from the dead was to forgive us. That he came, he shed his blood, he rose again, and he ascended to the Father for the main purpose of forgiving us. I think that as you go along with this video, you will see that is, that is not the purpose for which Jesus came and died. His purpose was not essentially or merely to forgive us. His purpose was to save us from our sins. Not to just forgive us for our sins, but to save us from our sins. Obviously, his death on the cross included forgiveness. But the main thrust and his main purpose in coming and dying was not to forgive us. If you think about that a little, you will realize that in the Old Testament, God forgave people their sins. He forgave David. He forgave others. He forgave sins. And Jesus, in the New Testament, also forgave sins. There was a woman with an alabaster container of ointment who poured it upon Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, your sins are forgiven. They are forgiven. And the Pharisees were scandalized. What? How can a man forgive sins? Another incident was one you probably all know about the young man who was lowered down through the roof in front of Jesus because there wasn't room in the house where he was. And Jesus turned to the young man and said, Your sins are forgiven. Well, the Pharisees were scandalized again. What do you mean? Who, who can forgive sins except God alone? And Jesus said something very significant. So that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on the earth to forgive sins, rise up and walk. And the young man rose up and walked. He was healed. Jesus had the authority on the earth, not authority in the heaven where he is right now at the right hand of God to forgive. He had authority here on this earth, before he died and before he rose again, to forgive sins. Now, some may say that, well, this was forward-looking forgiveness. That was looking towards the cross. And so, because he was going to die, he could forgive people. And because Jesus was going to die someday, in the Old Testament, God would forgive people. Well, you may say that, but the Bible doesn't say that, and God doesn't say that. There may be some truth in that. I'm not saying that Jesus' death did not include forgiveness. It certainly did. But that was not his main purpose. Somehow or another, we have received through the translation of the scriptures mainly and through our Christian tradition a gospel that is not correct. It is 
erroneous. It is weakened and watered down and has become something sort of like baby food, which is easy for people to accept. Jesus came, died on the cross, and rose again to free us from our sins, to change us into his image, to make us holy people who no longer sin. Many people just think Jesus is going to go on forgiving and forgiving and forgiving and forgiving, and we go along sinning and sinning and sinning and sinning until finally Jesus comes back and puts an end to it. But that is not what the Bible says. The angel said to Joseph, who married Mary, You shall call his name Jesus, and he will save his people from their sins. Not from the consequences of their sins. He will save them from their sins. He will change them. He will liberate them. He will make them into people who no longer sin. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is why he came and died. He was already forgiving people before he came. He was already forgiving people before he died on the cross. But no one was ever changed into his image. No one was ever liberated from sin. No one was ever made holy as God is before Jesus died on the cross and rose again. It couldn't happen. The power in the death and resurrection of Christ is that we could be made holy. We could be changed. We could be freed from our sins. Now I'd like to read a few verses from the New Testament. And these are verses from the New International Version, NIV. And because of the translation of these verses, <coughs> which are very key verses, very important verses in the, in the New Testament, in our, in our understanding of the gospel. This is one of the reasons why peaceful people believe in this gospel of forgiveness. Before I read, I'd like to mention that there is no verse that I know that talks about the gospel of your forgiveness. There is a verse that talks about the gospel of your salvation, which is something different. Let's read together. Matthew 26, 28. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Luke 24, 47. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Acts 5.31 God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sin. All right. This word translated forgiveness here is the word you have to give my Greek pronunciation here. Aphesis. A-P-H-E-S-I-S. -E now, if you look into this word, for example, look at Strong's, who Mr. Strong was somebody who studied deeply the New Testament, researched, spent his life digging into the meaning of the New Testament words. Many of the interlinear uh, Greek versions have the numbers in to on top of the Greek words. And those are Strong's numbers. Those are the numbers that Mr. Strong assigned to these words so that he could uh, research them and define them and so that we could know what they mean. Now, researching into what Mr. Strong says, he says this word means freedom. 
and figuratively pardon or forgiveness. So the main meaning of the word is not forgiveness. It's liberation. It's freedom. Now, figuratively, it can mean to forgive. But why we would, would we take the key verses in the New Testament about Jesus' purpose and work and use a translation that is merely implied or figurative? Why wouldn't we use the main translation, the central, the key translation, which says freedom, liberation? I would like to read these verses, these same verses, in another version of the New Testament and let you see how they say something quite different. Matthew 26, 28 said, For this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, which was poured out for many, resulting in liberation from sins. Luke 24, 47, And that repentance resulting in being, re being released from the bondage of sins would be proclaimed in his name, to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Acts 5.31 He is the one whom God has exalted with his right hand to be a prince and savior, to bring repentance to Israel and deliverance from sins. Here we have the real purpose of Jesus' death and resurrection. Deliverance from sins. As I said before, certainly forgiveness is included in this marvelous, wonderful work. But the central point, the focus, was not just a way to permit people to go on sinning and sinning without consequences. He died for our sins to get rid of them, to change us, to work miraculous things inside of us to transform us so that we no longer sin and we become holy people. This is the gospel. I am not discarding forgiveness. Let no one say that I am against forgiveness or say that the gospel of Jesus does not include forgiveness. It certainly does. But that was not the main purpose. This gospel of forgiveness <clears throat> has gotten us to where we are today. A church full of sinning people who believe all their sins are forgiven. And therefore, before God, it doesn't really matter if they sin one more time or two more times, more or less. <clears throat> because it's all being forgiven. Jesus died to forgive us. That's his main point. He loves forgiveness. That's what he wants to do. Why not sin some more? So we can have some more forgiveness. But Jesus' purpose was to make a holy people, a righteous people, a people like himself. Now I want to read some more verses here which also include this same word, aphesis. Well, while I'm at it, let's talk about the word aphemi. That's the word in the New Testament for forgiveness. When Jesus, is taught, when Jesus speaks about forgiveness, for example, in Matthew 6.15, where he talks about, if you don't forgive others, God won't forgive you. He uses the word aphemi, not aphes, not liberation. He uses the word, another word for forgiveness. When in John 20, 23, he says, whosoever sins you forgive are forgiven. He uses the word aphemi, not aphes. 
He's not talking about liberation. He's talking about forgiveness, letting it go. Okay, I forgive you. And that's a wonderful thing. Forgiveness is really good. But in the New Testament, when Jesus taught about forgiveness, he did not use the word aphesis, which means liberation, release. Okay? So now we're going to go on and read some other verses. I'm going to read this in the New Translation, which is the Father's Life New Testament. Ephesians 1, 7. It is in him that we have our release by the full payment of the ransom price, which is his blood. Even the release from bondage to our sins, according to to the liberality of his grace. In Colossians 1.14, it is through him that we have the release, the liberation from our sins by the full payment of the ransom price, the shedding of his blood. Maybe your translation doesn't talk about paying the full ransom price. Maybe it has a word called redeemed. What does redeemed mean? When I was a kid, a long time ago, my mother used to collect gold bond stamps. These little stamps, you'd fill this little book with stamps, and then you could go to a store and get some product after you had so many books of stamps, maybe a toaster or something. And we redeemed our stamps. And I think there are coupons, maybe on some bonds, people buy some bonds and every month they redeem the coupons from the bonds. But redeem is not a common word in today's society. Not something people use very much. As you may know, I live in Brazil. And here, sometimes something happens which is not, com which is not common in the US or England, Australia, some other countries that speak English. That is called kidnapping. Here, sometimes people are kidnapped and they are held for ransom. They're tied up, they're put in a little dungeon, they're kept there maybe for months and months until somebody comes along and pays the ransom price, pays the price demanded by the kidnapper. Now, in Jesus' time, there were many people who were ransomed. During wars, for example, it was very common for these, the soldiers, to take captives. And they used these captives as slaves quite frequently. <clears throat> in the day of Jesus, Rome was estimated to have about one million people, inhabitants, of which... 400,000, approximately, were slaves. They were captives. Most of them were not Africans. A lot of them were from the Caucasian region. In the Slavic areas of Europe. In fact, I read that the word slave comes from the word Slav. I can't tell you if that's true or not, but... That's what I read. So, here we have these captives. And some of these captives were important people or were from, from families that had money. So instead of enslaving these people, these soldiers kept them and held them for ransom. This was a common thing in Jesus' day, people being held for ransom. And so the Greeks had a word for to be paid, to pay the ransom price in full. I will try to pronounce this Greek word for you. I believe it is, hold on a second, I'm looking for it here. Apulotrosis, apulotrosis, A-P-U-L-O-T-R-O-S-I-S, apulotrosis, all right? Which means to pay 
the ransom price, in full. That is the word redeemed in Ephesians 1.7 and Colossians 1.4, which has become a very common religious word. We've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, but people don't really stop and think about what it means. I am here to tell you to insist that when people pay the ransom price here in Brazil, they do not pay it to forgive those people who are held captives. They pay it to liberate them from their captivity. Let me repeat that. The ransom is never paid to forgive people. But ransom money is paid to free people, to liberate them, to get them untied and unbound and out of that little cell. Can you imagine a prisoner in solitary confinement and then one day his lawyer comes and says, Hey, I want you to know that you have been forgiven. See ya. And off he goes. Can the prisoner, wait a minute. Wait, wait, I'm glad I'm forgiven, but I want to get out of here. I want to be free. Forgiveness is good, but it's not enough. Jesus came to save his people from their sin, to liberate us, to free us, and to make us holy as he is holy. This is the gospel message. Our scriptures, our translations of the New Testament, have been weak and inadequate. And it's given us a message of forgiveness, but not a message of salvation. Salvation has been watered down to mean that someday we're going to heaven and that we can be forgiven. But this is not the meat of the gospel message. The gospel says that we, beholding and reflecting, as if in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being changed from glory to glory into that same image. This is the gospel message. The gospel message is that we can be free from sin. Now I'm making some other videos to try to explain this more clearly. But this is the essence of the gospel message. Jesus came to the earth life and offered himself as a sacrifice for us so that we too could live a sinless life. Paul said he didn't think he had already attained or he wasn't yet made perfect. But he pressed on that he might attain it. He wasn't yet made perfect, but he was intending to be. He was pressing on to be. He was heading in that direction <clears throat> because he knew the power of the cross. He knew the power of the gospel. He knew the power of the Lord Je the risen Lord Jesus to free us from what we are. Jesus can forgive our sins but he cannot forgive our sin sins are what we do sin is what we are and although he can forgive us for anything and everything he can't forgive what we are there's another solution to that problem the operation of his cross inside of us now I'm going to stop here and I'm going to do another video on how that transformation process works. But for right now, let us know that Jesus' purpose was not merely to forgive us, but to save us from our sin and make us like himself. Amen.